We now move to item number six on the uh, on the agenda, which is public input. Um, I might just wait till people have left the room so I can be heard. It doesn't affect decision making. Uh, item six on the agenda. The first item is public input from uh, John Stoll. Uh, Stoll, I um, hope I've pronounced that correctly, on participatory budgeting as a contribution to enhancing the engagement of citizens. So if I can ask John to come forward. John, welcome. Uh, please, please be seated. And uh, you've got five, five minutes, and then uh, any questions that there may be from, from councillors. Right. Well, I've set my time. If it goes off, we need to evacuate the building. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good on you. So what am I talking about? Participatory budgeting, or PB, being a bit of a mouthful, is a democratic process in which community members directly decide how to spend a public budget. Why am I talking about it? At present, there is a very low citizen turnout and participation in local politics. I think only about 35 or just over 35 percent of the electorate voted in the last council election 2016. We as Aucklanders, I think, widely don't feel engaged in the council decisions. And the available feedback channels, Shape Auckland, People's Panel and so on, don't really promote real discussion. We feel the need urgently to find ways of engaging citizens more meaningful in decision making. Participatory budgeting has been widely and successfully used in many countries and many towns throughout the world as a way of engaging and empowering people and as an introduction to doing democracy differently. What have been found to be the outcomes? Increased civic engagement, more broadly representative political participation, the emergency of new community leaders, and, more, and a more political, politically active citizenry. Also stronger and more trusting relationships between government, organizations, and citizens. And finally, perhaps fairer and in a sense, in the sense more of more de democratically representative and more effective spending. So what exactly is being proposed here? That the Auckland Council should initiate a trial of participatory budgeting by setting aside a minimum of 1% of the Council's annual capital budget, which I reckon would come to about a million dollars per local board, unless I've got my sums wrong, um, and that budget to be spent as decided by citizens directly, whether by jury or by other means. Other, other, in places where it's widely used, up to 10% of the budget of the local budget is so allocated. And indeed, in one year, Paris let the whole of their budget be decided by citizens' juries. A possible way of trialling would be to try it out with one local board. And I have presented this to my own local board in the Waitakere Ranges. And some idea of the way it might work is illustrated. I think you've all got a copy of this um, prepared by one of my grandchildren last weekend. <laughs> um, a lot better than I could do it. So I think Auckland, being the largest and most advanced council in the country, could innovate. And although this, this process appears to be new in New Zealand, I've su succeeded in finding nowhere where it's been tried, we could lead the way and decide to give it a go. And that's what I'm suggesting to you today. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, councillors, all for listening. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, John, and thank you for keeping well within your, your time. And I just have the work of art from one of your grandchildren, so <laughs> congratulate uh, uh, them or him or her from, from us. Um, is there, are there any questions? Uh, Councillor Quacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, look, uh, it's a very, very interesting uh, concept that you, you put to us. And I wonder if you would perhaps give us your view on whether the amalgamation uh, of uh, Auckland in 2010 has increased or decreased citizen participation in, count in government, local government. I don't think I've got a clue. Oh. <laughs> I thought you might have done some work on that. I mean, the, 
No, I mean, I, I've been drawing on sources. If you go to, if you go to the, because this hasn't really been considered in New Zealand, I, I know that um, Max Rashbrook has recently published his report, um, A Bridge Both Ways, which also recommends participatory budgeting, but not in any specific context or sense. Um, I don't know. I'm not an academic. I haven't. Uh, maybe the Auckland University of Technology have studied participation in local body elections. Um, they've also said that although 30, whatever it is, 33% of us have voted, 66% of Aucklanders feel they'd like to have, have more say in local government. Don't know where they are. <laughs> It begs a very large question, that. Thank you. Um, we now have a question from Councillor Whoops. Casey. Oh, John, what, did, uh, what was the reaction from the Waitakere Local Board? Um, so far, it was just a month ago that I presented to them. I, I would say polite interest, <coughs> and that's as far as it's gone so far. I don't think any, any rest. I mean, obviously, this is, they're at a stage in the annual uh, budgetary cycle and planning and so on where it's perhaps not too appropriate to take this thing very far, very quickly, but um, I, shall, I, I think it's fair enough to say they're not. They didn't reject it out of hand. They, they, I had a very polite listening and quite a lot of questions afterwards and discussion, and I've sent them further information since then. And there's a lot more information available on um, the petition website. Thank you. Uh, last question, Councillor Simpson. Thank you, Your Worship. Have you, um, John, thank you. Have you sort of raised some interesting things, because we, were, I think, as a council, always keen to engage more with our uh, communities. Have you spoken to anybody from council's communication and engagement department? I, I have a meeting next week on the 1st with um, Thomas, sorry, I'm terrible with names, but with somebody who's, there are, yes, with, within the council, yes. There are many titles within council offices which suggest democracy, but um, <laughs> some are quite hard to well, I wouldn't to like down. to comment on that, but I just was just making sure that you have the opportunity to share your views with the yes. staff who will come to us with um, engagement and communication options for the LTP, so thank you. Thank you, uh, and I have a further question from Councillor Cooper. Thank you, thank you, Mr Stoll. Um, one of the questions I wanted to know, I guess we're often, it's very easy, we all complain about what you know, gov council <coughs> spends money on, local boards spend money on, so I guess this would be one way of saying, well, we decided what the money was spent on. With the citizens' juries, how are they chosen? Is it just a money form of election or <coughs> appointments? The best way, in my opinion, is to select them by lot. Um, I think mm. that the process of, of brainstorming ideas can be done by anybody, by normal, the normal local mm. um, residents, committees, or whatever. Um, people who put ideas forward to the trust board's $1 million effort la of last year. Yeah. Um, but my own preference and is that the decision should be made by a sufficient number of people chosen by lot mm -hmm. so that representation is automatic, as it were, rather than what one of my daughters calls the usual squeaky wheels. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation, John, and I'll formally move on behalf of Council that we receive your presentation. Second. And thank you for your time, seconded by Councillor Sayers. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 To the contrary, no. Kerry, thank concept, you for your attendance really. today. Thank you very much. Um, the second public input is from the Fields of Remembrance Trust, and could I invite David McGregor and Juliana Austin to the table for the presentation. Uh, welcome to both of you, and before you present, thank you for the incredible work that uh, your organisation does. Really appreciate it. You're out there every year, and you're making a big difference. Uh, David, are you leading? Yes, uh, Kia ora and good morning. Um, the object of uh, this presentation today is just to bring you up to speed with what uh, the Trust proposes for the end of the commemorative period on the 11th of November uh, 2018. Um, <clears throat> we have already presented to date to the Waitamata Local Board and to the Domain uh, Committee in respect of the proposal to create a field to um, honour all of the fallen 
uh, all of the uh, New Zealanders who fell in, the wo in World War I, some 18,277 of them uh, identified by name uh, in the field on what's commonly referred to as the close, which is the area extending from the, um, the main drive right up to the <coughs> Court of Honour uh, on the Cenotaph. Um, just identifying Fields Remembrance Trust is a trust combi uh, that, that is, uh, was constituted by the Royal New Zealand RSA, by the Auckland RSA and by the Passchendaele Society. Uh, it was set up for the basis of applying to the Lotteries Board for um, uh, funding to enable communities to, during a commemorative period, create fields of remembrance for the fallen in their area. Um, it, was, it anticipated that there would be a final field, and initially that was intended to be in Wellington and, and uh, proposed for the new National Memorial War Memorial Garden in Wellington. Regrettably, it doesn't fit there, um, and so uh, we have obtained Lottery Board approval to shift it to, to Auckland. Um, during the commemorative period, we have been enabling communities to establish these uh, fields of remembrance, but more importantly, we've worked in conjunction with the Ministry of Education, and we've supplied fields to 2,550 schools and to some um, uh, 4,600 early childhood centres, so that, that uh, um, there is, they, ha they have a resource to be able to create a field on either Anzac Day or Armistice Day during a commemorative period and we hope beyond it. This is the proposed um, uh, layout for, for the field um, and what we have done is we've had to make some assumptions in relation to Council's proposal for a commemorative memorial um, and that uh, uh, location shown there is uh, uh, the best estimate that we can uh, determine at this stage of, of the location of that. Um, and you will see that what we have done is we've preserved what we refer to as a symbolic connection, uh, which has been required of all the previous applications we've made to establish fields uh, on this area um, from Council. You'll be aware, and I should have premised these remarks by saying that this presentation, of course, is subject to our making formal application to Council for an event permit. Uh, and uh, the processes of, of uh, council and, and satisfying council processes uh, in respect of an event. You see on the left hand side that in conjunction with the field, the 18,277 crosses uh, uh, that we've laid out in, in the year of, of uh, the, the, that they fell, we propose a commemorative walk, and uh, that's around that area that you will know as the bandstand. And that we, in that area, we propose also some discrete fields, uh, fields in respect of families uh, that lost more than one of the family uh, during the Great War. Um, also, uh, we are proposing a, uh, a walkway of some 29 uh, um, uh, light boards that uh, take you through uh, the storyboards uh, that take you through the individual story, uh, so, so, uh, stories that, that explain the impact of the war on men and their families, both abroad and at home. We're proposing that the commemorations commence in October 2018, and we're presently uh, working with the MOE uh, to establish a basis upon which from the 22nd of October 2018 and its decommissioning on the, what we're suggesting, the 22nd of November 2018, we have a, a, a program that involves the schools of the region being able to visit um, the fields. Um, the light boxes, uh, 1,600 by 800, uh, those are two <coughs> examples, the uh, commencement of the war and uh, a diagrammatic representation of the Western Front and the conclusion of the war, which is the New Zealand uh, Rifle Brigade success at La Quinoir. Um, I just get Juliana to talk to this next slide, which uh, to me, I have some difficulty emotionally every time I read it. Uh, I need to update this because it's actually 30 families that lost three brothers in that war. Uh, the latest family I have found um, is a Nuean family um, that sent four boys off to that war and only one came back. Two of them died on the ship coming home um, and were buried at sea. Um, Twelve sets of brothers died on the same day and I found nine sets of twins who died in that war. 
Um, yeah, it was pretty horrific, really. Um, let me go to the next one. Yes, as I've already indicated, uh, well, uh, behind uh, the, the uh, storyboard that's proposed to, to diagrammatically represent uh, the central powers and, and uh, the, uh, the conflict in terms of the Triple Alliance and Triple Entente, uh, we then look at the soldiers, the artillery, and come to uh, another very evocative slide, and that relates to the New Love Brothers at, uh, and the Battle of Passchendaele to uh, October of, of, of uh, 1917, which will be um, commemorated this year as <coughs> when 100 years ago. Mm. Uh, the postman chose not to, to deliver the third telegram to Mrs Newlove. Uh, he sent someone else. Um, he couldn't cope with that third brother. Mrs Newlove had recently lost her husband oh, as well. And the next one, um, we can skip through to the... This is... Uh, <laughs> We're trying to reflect what the times were like back yeah. here in New Zealand, and th this is an extract uh, is. Uh, from the um, the, uh, the uh, Auckland Weekly, and that uh, we we hope is um, indicative of the sort of uh, reality of the time, uh, having to cope with opening newspaper and perhaps recognising somebody of the family or of the community uh, as having um, as as having fallen. Um, the, um, uh, those were just some examples of the storyboards that we proposed for the commemorative walk. So that in broad outline is what we are proposing as um, uh, an event, uh, which as I say is subject to the appropriate uh, uh, council processes and applications uh, for an event uh, in 2018. Happy to answer any questions. Uh, thank, thank you very much, uh, David and Juliana. Uh, I'll check to see if we have questions from, from councillors. If, if I can ask a question of clarification, because it can't be done in Wellington, does that mean there'll be 18,277 crosses on, on the domain? Yes. And that, yeah, I mean, that will speak volumes for the, the sacrifice made. Um, I suppose the only other comment I'd make is, uh, you know, the story of the New Love Brothers uh, will be later on the agenda discussing uh, the World War I memorial. And that memorial is to commemorate not those who died, but those who were left behind. And you just imagine yourself in the position of the mother of those three boys. Uh, and you can see why, you know, having such an evocative memorial uh, may be very appropriate for, for Auckland a huge sacrifice of a mother that loses not one son but three sons uh, is just something that, that most of us could, could uh, barely imagine. Well, that was the point of Mrs Knight's, the quote of Mrs Knight's, I prayed so hard that you might come back, both come back to me, but it's a hard task to be a mother of soldiers and her three sons went away to war, not one of them returned. Mm. Right, if there are no other, uh, Councillor Lee. Thank you very much, um, and um, thank you for the work that you do. Uh, David, um, I understand you're here at the invitation of His Worship. Um, there is uh, an item on the agenda uh, relating to cent the Centenary Memorial. May I ask you, were you and your organisation happy with the decisions of the Auckland Domain Committee in relation to the memorial. Um, perhaps, Councillor, uh, uh, through you, Your Worship, Councillor Lee, um, we sought to come here of our own volition. I was aware that the, this, uh, the, the matter of the commemoration was on the agenda. Um, <coughs> but in terms of the sequence of the briefings we've been doing, firstly, the, lo the local board and secondly, the domain committee, it seemed to me to be the next step that the governing body needs to be informed. Um, so we, we made our own approach to to, uh, uh, to present today, but I was aware that this other that, that the council's uh, commemorative project was was on the agenda. 
Um, insofar as the domain committee, uh, do, uh, our dealings with the domain committee have uh, been uh, uh, been concerned. Um, Fields of Remembrance Trust made a submission to the original proposals for a commemorative project, and that was uh, the basis of that submission was that the uh, whatever the whatever the commemorative project was, wherever it was, there needed to be some sort of symbolic or otherwise connection to the Court of Honour and the Cenotaph, and that has been the field's position throughout. Um, when the uh, design um, uh, uh, brief that was chosen for the Council Commemorative Project um, uh, was publicised, uh, subsequently during um, uh, the Domain Committee's, well, for, before the Domain Committee, we also presented to the World War I Steering Committee uh, which reported to its recommendation to the governing body, and that was that uh, that uh, um, wherever the commemorative project was, that some form of connection uh, be maintained, symbolic or otherwise. Um, subsequently, we I think appeared once formally before the domain committee and made the same presentation. Um, I'm I'm aware informally of some of the uh, of some of the uh, outcomes of the domain committee. Uh, but we've not been formally involved in the processes of, of the Domain Committee. Um, I've, I've personally had no difficulty with any of the dealings we've had with the Domain Committee. Uh, but we've not been formally involved in uh, the position that the Domain Committee uh, uh, um, uh, determined it was in, at, uh, in in the context of its last meeting. Uh, question, Councillor Newman. Actually, with your indulgence, Mr. Chair, just a statement on this uh, very briefly, if I may, uh, to, to thank you, David and, and Juliana, for this work. Um, <clears throat> I've had the, um, the great privilege of, of um, spending some time at EAP and going to the Menin Gate for the service every night and in the Tyne Cot Memorial, uh, and also laying um, poppies on the graves of, of fallen New Zealand soldiers at the Commonwealth War Graves in that part of Belgium, and it, it's haunting because the, the headstones just go on and on and on. There are thousands and thousands, and including at the Burr Crossroads, where we found five um, fallen soldiers from the um, New Zealand Pioneer Māori Battalion who, who succumbed. Um, uh, the thing that struck me about the experience was we were so far from home, and I wondered when we were laying poppies on the graves of those New Zealand soldiers, if any New Zealander had been there previously to do that. So I think that it would, I think it would be, Aucklanders would be very privileged to see those um, crosses uh, arranged at the domain in that context because it would give them some sort of visual experience of what you do see when you go to Western Europe, which most New Zealanders unfortunately won't see because it's a long way away. But when you do go there, it is very powerful and you're very privileged to be there and to share that. So if you could bring some <coughs> semblance of that experience to the domain, I think that I would very strongly support that. Thank you very much for this advocacy. I should have add, added that uh, in conjunction with the Passchendaele Society this year and the Ministry of Education, uh, there has been a schools project and 10... Uh, um, I'm sorry, I'm so old-fashioned, sixth and seventh formers uh, are, are travelling to uh, Passchendaele for the 100th commemoration of the Battle of Passion, Passchendaele. Um, uh, and regrettably, none of them are from, none of them are from Auckland. Uh, none of the Auckland schools uh, succeeded. It was Christchurch, uh, Hamilton and Rotorua. Uh, but you're, you're quite right. I mean, um, I actually think... Uh, to date, we've laid out uh, fields on the domain on a cumulative basis, so that each year we've tried to rep replicate the number from the region that have fallen, and it's grown each year through 14, 15, 16, and 17. And I think that, uh, um, and, and that's been regionalised. It hasn't been on a national basis. Once we get to 18,277, it will be, uh, that'll be a real reality. Yeah. And each one will bear the name of the boy who's died, or young woman. Last question, Councillor Simpson. 
Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I'd, I'd actually like to formally move this uh, thanks, if I may, because I've now heard this presentation twice, and there's a... Sorry. Uh, no, 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 not at all, not at all. But uh, the, you know, I, I sort of oscillate between not liking it and liking it, if you, if you get my gist. Um, I, I just think it's going to be incredibly moving. You've done a huge amount of work of your own volition, and I think that your personal contribution towards this project and the team of people that you're putting together to make it happen um, absolutely should be congratulated. I'm sorry it's not a question but I'd just like to move a vote of thanks. Thank you. I'm happy to second. Right. Uh, the uh, councillor has moved that we receive the presentation and thank them for their attendance. And I'm sure all of us would like to add to that uh, the thank you for the countless hours that you've put in in commemorating something which even 100 years later is still incredibly important to all of us and our families and often uh, on a personal basis. Uh, I'm happy to second that amendment. Uh, all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. To the contrary, <coughs> no. <coughs> Carried. Thank you very much, David and Juliana.